Hey guys, it's me, your boy Josh. Today we are talking about the EPA and DOT, the step two of getting your dream vehicle back to the States and or if your dream vehicle is already in the States, what to look out for. So let's begin. Rule number one. Remember guys, when you're looking at these cars, cars can be very deceiving, just like everything. For example, Yeah, you're a pervert, but this is not what you expected, is it? So guys, now that you expected something completely different, I'm going to show you what to expect whenever you try to buy a car overseas. Thank you for my drift. <laughs> you're welcome, please don't stretch it out. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. But, so what we're gonna do today is show you vehicles. I'm going to show you how to process the EPA and DOT paperwork and just send them an email Tell, explaining them everything you're trying to do and just walk you through the basics. The first thing we're gonna do is talk over the car itself. Seriously, wait, you think they're like taking you serious as you remain in distress? Yep, let's, all right guys. So we are going to walk you through taking photos of the vehicle and or having someone internationally take those photos for you. This can also be applied to the vehicles in the States. Even though they already are over here, they're registered, they have a state title and all that stuff. Man, I'm telling you, there's some shady stuff that's been going on. There's a lot of gray market stuff going on. So, better safe than sorry. If they get offended that you're doing that and you're asking for all these pictures and you're just telling them, hey, I want to check with EPA and DOT, they give you a, a, a hassle about doing the photos and stuff, it's best to probably stay clear of that car because there's probably some shady dealings going on there. So, let's jump into the photos. I'm going to show you exactly what the EPA and DOT asked from me. And then I'll show you a packet that I had to make. I made one for my GTR and both my Supras. I'm going to walk you through the whole process. So let's go do these photos, guys. All right, guys. So the main aspects of when you pick out your car, you finally contacted the people at JDM Expo. You found out that person that you wanted to buy from, just somebody, anybody. Uh, what information are you going to need immediately from those guys? The first thing you're going to need is the firewall number. The serial number that matches up to the car, it matches up to the chassis, that matches up to the transmission, that matches up to the engine. The other number you're going to need to make sure that that firewall matches your Japanese plate at the bottom. Once you make sure that those two match, uh, you're golden. On top of that, you need to make sure at the bottom of your uh, engine block that you have a uh, engine number. Once that engine number is verified that all three numbers match, your gold three main numbers you collected them all the next thing you want to do is you want to take those that information and plug it into a vin verification online now toyota has a vin verification for all jdms across the world any kind of toyota you can look at the vin it'll tell you the make the model the transmission the color it was originally and etc i'm going to show you that now all right guys you just found the Toyota, they shipped you the VIN number, the engine number, you're cross-referencing everything. This is one of the best sites that I know of to go and look up specific types of Supras. Uh, as you can see, it's just the main site. It's called the mark4.supras.org.nz. If I highlight it, there's the full address at the top. So with that, we want to look up the VIN tag. So you can go right here and we can start to source what type of car we have. Uh, this can be a wide range of different Supras. You have to pay attention to the exact specification. This will tell you what year it was made. That VIN will identify everything about it. It's like its birth date or its social security number. It's gonna identify that, that car down to the day it was made. And then that's also the month that you can bring it back. So we have the Japanese non-turbo models production dates, the Japanese twin turbo models production dates. And some of these numbers will range in between from like 9,305 to 9,505. Your car might be in between that number. That means that's when it can come back and that's what your model it is. But this is typically where I'm going to verify that all my Mark IV numbers match up, the VIN numbers. Uh, you can also go to the top and type it in. As you can see, it will even break down your engine VIN tag information on the Japanese plate. Uh, this is just a very helpful guide. Uh, at the top, it goes over more. You even have booklets, brochures, and everything. You can click through these. It tells you how to build your car, pretty much. It's very interesting. Uh, I've been reading through it a bunch, especially when I was buying my vehicles. 
but let's say I want well, uh, 2021 1996s are coming up. So these are the chassis numbers you would be able to look at. This will be identified on your firewall and also that Japanese plate. There's your 95s and there's your 94s. So with that, let's take a look at the GTRs. I'll show you that site also so you can verify that the GTR you have is authentic. All right, guys. So we just talked about Supras. Now we're getting into the Nissan Skylon GTRs. And just like the Nissan or the Toyota Supras, they all have VIN numbers that match up. Now your Japanese plate on your Skylines are going to be like a little blue Japanese plate. And if you're looking at the engine bay, it's going to be on the firewall on the left side and it's going to be blue. Uh, but right now I'm looking at the, uh, the BCN R33 stuff and it's only, it's just called the gtrregistry.com. So if you click up at the top, you can see it's just very, you Google it. It's very easy to find. Uh, and then you can type in at your search bar, you can type in BCN R33, whatever your VIN number is, and it'll pull up that engine code, that engine number, the month it was made, the original color, the production, and how many is actually of that color. If you have a rare Supra or a rare GTR, it will also break down that, like a NERS spec GTR and etc. It's going to give you all that information. This is very important to have in case you ever want to sell it later on and or if somebody just rebuilt that car and put some kind of weird emblem on there, a V-spec sticker or whatever, and it's not really a V-spec, this will actually break down your car for you. All right, guys. Once you verify that your VIN numbers are authenticated and all cars have a VIN registry. Like the uh, Land Rover Defenders and everything, you can literally Google it. it. It just might take you a second to find out where it's at. But literally all of them have a VIN identification number that identifies that car and what it is. Once you have verified it personally, before you even contact the EPA and DOT, because you might rule out some of the cars that you've been looking at already and not have to deal with the EPA and DOT. Sometimes they take time. And a lot of people get antsy with these GTRs and they want to purchase them real fast. Now, once you verify it, then reach out to EPA and DOT and ask them about building a packet and seeing what is needed from you to ship that car back to the States. And or if there's a car that's already in the States, Ask them if you can just verify the information and it's a legal car. You don't want to buy an illegal gray market car. It, you, that's a lot of money that you would spend. And people are trying to get rid of them because they know they have a gray market car and they can't get it professionally registered. That's an issue. So the next site we're going to look at is the NHTSA. Now this will break down cars that are already eligible to come back to the States and it'll also give you the guidelines for the 25-year-old classic. It'll also give you forms such as the HS7 declaration form. Now let's take a look at NHTSA. After you do the VIN verification and you make sure that that all checks out, then you start looking at EPA and DOT and contacting those guys about your vehicle that you're looking at. If you haven't verified the VIN and made sure that it all matches up yourself and did your own homework, there's no reason to hit the EPA and DOT up. They're gonna look at it and they're gonna tell you absolutely not. Might as well just cross your T's, check. Cross your T's, check your ass, cross your X's, whatever it is, man, you know what I'm saying? But you need to just go ahead and verify it yourself. That's the easiest way to do it, is just check the VIN real quick, then process it through the EPA and DOT, send them an email. This next step, step is the NHTSA. So this will tell you if your car is already legal to come back to the States. It also will tell you uh, your legal importation and everything, your HS7 form, and if it's a classic, if it can come back at the 25 years of age and everything. We'll go over that piece shortly. So let's jump into the first Guys, bit. And don't forget to check, like have them do a cold start, a warm start and everything. Send you a video of the car while it's overseas or it's in the showroom in the States or something like that. Cold start, hot start all the pictures just remember to gather all the information don't just get trigger happy and go in there and be like ah, car, yay! don't do that man think through the process you're about to spend some money you want to have your dream car you don't want your dream car taken from you certain states in the states they'll crush your car so california is known to do it so if it comes over illegal one you either have to ship it back two you have to crush it so don't run into that issue i'm going to try to walk you through as best as possible there is always going to be little gray areas that i'm going to miss Hopefully I can fill in some of the dots and some of the gray areas, but let's face it, I'm a human man, I'm gonna make mistakes. Uh, the next piece we're gonna talk about is the NHTSA. 
uh, the EPA and DOT standards. I'm gonna show you where you can go and look online to see if your car's already been registered to bring back to the states or if they've already approved certain year models to come back and or they're already configured similar to what a US version car is. Uh, if they're similar, I think, uh, what was it? Some of the Aston Martins that are actually right-hand drive are very close to what the left-hand drives are, so they're allowed to come back to the States already, and they might be like a 2002 or 2003. We're gonna read through that guide a little bit too. So at the top, you can notice that it's the nhtsa.gov website for importing a vehicle into the United States. One of the first applications, or actually the first thing that populates is the declaration form HS7. So if we were to click on this, we would see option one. The vehicle is 25 or more years old or the equipment item was manufactured on a date when no applicable federal motor vehicle safety standard or theft provincial standard was in effect. This is the block that you're gonna wanna check and the date of the manufacturing. So your VIN number will give you all this. This is one of the sheets that you're gonna have to fill out prior to shipping your vehicle back to the States. I always look for this. When I was talking to some of the uh, dealers over here that are trying to sell some of these Skylines, I asked for the NH or the HS7 form, and a lot of them just looked at me with blank stares. This is a Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Bumper and Theft Prevention Standard. It is a standard that you have to have. Now, it's not saying that that car will be up to date on the standards of safety. It is just saying that it's able to be bypassed for safety and standards. This form has to be with the car when you buy it. Uh, this is when I come into issues with people with gray market cars and everything. A lot of people do not even have this with their car. So just be cautious. So if we go back, we can start to scroll down. We can do the temporary importation. A lot of guys do this. There's some Skyline R34s that are over here under the show policy or show or display purposes. I am very cautious of these cars because you have to do an additional paperwork when it's 25 years old and it's time for when it's able to come and stay overseas or stay in America. There's going to be additional paperwork. So be very cautious if you're spending money to get one of these cars. I've seen R34s left and right on the show and display. Just be cautious. It still can be crushed if it's not legally documented. You can only drive these cars up to like 2,000 miles a year or something like that. But it's only a certain amount of time before you have to legally have it registered and you have to do all the paperwork to go with that. Next, let's look up the vehicles that are already eligible for importation. All right, guys. So what we're here to look for is the non-conforming vehicles. So right now, they already have a list that's already uh, of eligible motor vehicles that can be brought back to the States. Let's just took a, take a look at this because not all of them are 25 years old. You can actually bring in some of the other vehicles that are actually in the newer uh, years. So if we click on that, we scroll down. They're all in alphabetical order, by the way. Uh, I mean, look at this. Aston Martin Vanquish, 2002 to 2004. Uh, it gives you the NHTSA online numbers for it. You would just have to verify that the car that you want to bring over here, even if it's a newer model, if it's on this list, it's eligible to come back. Uh, look at this. The Bentley. Uh, I just saw it. The Bentley Azure. Azure? I can't even say that. I'm not going to try that. It's a left-hand drive or right-hand drive, and it's a 1998 model. It is allowed back in the States. Uh, you just have to look for the vehicle. So these are uh, vehicles that are allowed and are eligible to come back. Now we're going to look at other vehicles. All right, guys. So we just talked over non-conforming vehicles. I, I'm just going to let y'all run through this site. It's good to go in there and actually look at everything and take it in just by yourself. Next, we're going to talk about emails and how to get in touch with the EPA and DOT. This is the easiest way. It's just to go through customer service. You can reach out to them and be like, hey, I'm interested in bringing back a vehicle and or there's a vehicle in the States I'm interested. I just want to make sure it's legal. And then you can ship them all their information. So let's take a look. So you just looked up the Department of Transportation or DOT for what it stands for. These personnel are one of the people you need to get in touch with prior to buying your car and or just checking it out. The easiest way I found is just to go to the triple stack, the little three lines right here on your right, click on it, connect, and then contact us. This will give you a phone number. You can pull off an email address and stuff and send them an email and just casually talk to them. Uh, just tell them you want to ship a vehicle and or there's a vehicle in the States that you want to look at. Then you can send them this packet that we, we're going to go over. It's just a 
uh, your vehicles, the front, the back, the sides, the engine, the VIN numbers and everything, making sure everything matches up. They'll take a look at it and they'll say, yes, this 1994 Toyota Supra falls in the classic Next category. Next is the EPA website. So we looked at the DOT. Now we're on the EPA.gov uh, website. All you want to do is scroll to the bottom of this and you can see, hey, ask, contact EPA. You can do that. But I would suggest you go to hotlines. Click on hotlines, scroll down and select vehicles and engines and ports hotline at the very bottom. Just select it and then it will give you information. Uh, EPA is importing vehicles and engines and the imports helpline. If you contact these people, they are very helpful about determining if that vehicle is able to come back to the States and recommend things to you. Uh, mine recommended me, like I sent them a picture of a Toyota Supra and it had a, it, they converted it to a single turbo. They were like, absolutely not. It can't have these things. It, they just gave me information on it. They filled me in where I was clueless at. So pretty much your car has to be stock when it's coming back to the States so that they can verify that it's all original and there's nothing been done to it. So if you want to contact these people just for a warm fuzzy, this is how you would go through the EPA.gov site. Give them a phone call, get a, per, uh, a POC, a person of contact, and start an email chain with them and ship them all that information, all your VIN numbers and your photos. So let's move to the next thing. All right, guys, so this is the typical PowerPoint that I put together for the EPA and DOT. This is a, just a generic product that I did in PowerPoint. They requested pictures of the vehicle, the transmission, the interior, the shocks, the struts, all that stuff. They requested these types of images. So this is what I put together and I didn't have any questions back from the EPA and DOT. It's just to give you that good that okay, you're good to go. That don't worry, you don't need to worry about anything. Nothing's too flashy on there. Nothing's going to be flagged when it comes in through uh, when you import it. It's just to give you that good filler. It also will allow you to know if something's a gray market car in the states, and you won't have to, or you will have to worry about something. So let's go through this little packet. The first page I'll just label it as a 1994 Toyota Supra. The second page I took pictures. I went to the right side, driver's side, my front my left side, passenger side, my rear, and I'm just explaining to them each part of this. My boot, my interior. The next thing is, is I start showing them the, the engine itself. So I labeled it the 2JZ GTE engine bay. The one thing that I'm not gonna show you, as you can see on the bottom of my screen, is the Japanese plate and engine bay. I took a snapshot and I had the people that I was buying it from take that picture and send it directly to me along with the firewall identification number and the engine number. And like I was telling you, the firewall number needs to match the Japanese plate. So, which in return has to match up to the engine number itself. If those three numbers, and I keep repeating this over and over again, because if those three numbers match, you should be golden just at the very beginning. If one of these numbers does not match, stay clear of the car. That's just my best answer for you. If your car does not have that original Japanese plate that is on the side, one of two things. One, you can get in touch with the Toyota dealership and see if they can generate a new plate for you and or don't touch the car. Uh, I know this sounds bad, it's just safety. I'd rather be safe than sorry in the end game because that plate is very important for people to see overall. One, it adds value to the vehicle. Two, it's authentic authenticating the actual vehicle. And you need it, man, when you travel, when you bring it back over to the States and or if it's already stateside, you wanna make sure all the, paper, all the papers and the documents are good to go. So with that, after I sent this paperwork in, I literally had no issues from the EPA and DOT. All right, so you shipped all the information off to the EPA and DOT. Now you're just waiting to hear back from them. That it's just a waiting game. They usually answered me within one to two days. With COVID going on, I'm not quite sure how long it would take them to answer you. But in reality, when they get back to you, they'll be ex they'll be able to explain everything to you and what's wrong with the vehicle and or if it's illegally already in the, in the States and it's not supposed to be here. That way, they either give you a warm fuzzy that you're, you're good to go with that stateside Supra or GTR and or just stay away from it. 
So this video was just about EPA and DOT, not really any paperwork. I did show you the HS7 form, which is a very important piece of paperwork, especially when buying one of these cars over here. You have to have it. You're supposed to. Now, I don't see how people get passed without having it, but if they don't have it, then I dig in more to find out more legal reasoning why they don't have that form. If they can provide justification, and that's not a title. That is not a state title. A state title does nothing. It holds nothing if the government wants to come and seize your car. That pretty much just says you have a tag on the back of it and that it's been registered illegally in the states. I mean, you're taking a risk. So EPA and DOT, we covered it a little bit. Just contact them with any information you have. They are the POCs for importing a vehicle back to the states. I am just trying to give you that information um, and help you. Eh, you can only go so far with me. You need to get in touch with the actual people that do it. Hopefully this helps you guys. And uh, look forward to the next one because I'm going to start going over the paperwork that I had to ship. Take care, guys. Bye.